In this video, we're going to talk about surface tension. Perhaps you heard of this word in chemistry or in physics, but what do you think surface tension is? And how is it related to water? Now, let's say if you place a small amount of water on a horizontal surface, the water, from experience, you know it's not going to flatten out. It's not going to look like this. Instead, water forms these tiny droplets, and on a surface, it will look like a bead. And it forms this spherical shape because it wants to minimize the surface area. And surface tension causes that. So that's one property of surface tension. It works in such a way to minimize the surface area of a fluid. And that's why water tends to form beads if you have very small amounts of water. Another illustration is this one. Let's say if we have water and if we place a steel block in water because steel is denser than water it's gonna sink since it has a higher density light objects float heavy objects sink but even if you take the same material but let's say like a, a steel needle and you gently place it on the surface of water the surface tension can actually support the weight of the needle. So because of surface tension, tiny objects that have a higher density than water can remain on the surface of water rather than sinking into it, which is what we would expect of heavy objects. And this explains why certain insects, they can remain suspended on the surface of water. And it's all because of surface tension. Now the surface tension arises due to the cohesive forces within the water molecules. So there's a lot of water molecules in this uh, container. Now, the molecules at the surface, they have a net downward force. They're attracted to the molecules on the left and the right, and they're also attracted to the molecules below it. Since there's no water molecules above it, we don't have an upward force. So the net force acting on the molecules in the surface is directed towards the interior of a fluid. And so that's why if you have, let's say, liquid water, basically a small amount, the molecules at the surface will feel a downward attractive force towards the interior. And so water is going to form a bead. Because each molecule at the surface feels a force that directs it towards the interior of the drop. And so that's why surface tension causes water to form a spherical shape. And a sphere is the best shape that you want to have if you want to minimize the surface area of an object for a given volume. And so that's why we have this spherical shape, because surface tension wants to minimize the surface area of water. Now, how can we quantify surface tension? What is it exactly in terms of variables found in physics. Surface tension is represented by the Greek symbol gamma. And it's the ratio of the force and the length, which I'm going to say just L. So it has the units newtons per meter. So here's an example. Let's say if we have a movable, very thin rod. And on the inside, we have a fluid, a very thin fluid. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to increase the area of this fluid. And we're going to do so by pulling on this thin rod towards the right with a force. Now, surface tension wants to minimize the surface area. So as we try to pull the wire to the right, the fluid is going to exert a force directed to the left. It doesn't want to increase the surface area, so it's going to try to minimize it. And so on the left, that is going to be the force due to surface tension. And so notice that that force is acted over the length of this rod. Now, when dealing with this equation, you need to understand that you need to deal with the length in front of the rod and behind the rod. So technically, you need to put a 2 in front of this uh, L. 
So it's going to be F divided by 2L, where L is the length of the rod. And so that's how you can quantify the surface tension of a particular fluid. Now let's work on this problem. A force of 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons is required to pull a 5 centimeter long wire attached to a thin film of fluid, shown below. Calculate the surface tension. So here's the force F needed to pull it. So the surface tension is going to be the force per unit left. So L is 5 centimeters, but we need to multiply that by 2. So it's going to be 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons divided by 2 times the length, which is 5 centimeters. We need to convert that to meters, so we've got to divide that by 100. So that's 0 0.05 meters. Two times 0 0.05 is 0.10. So 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0.10. That's going to give us a surface tension of 0 0.036 newtons per meter. So now that we have the surface tension of the fluid, how can we move on and answer part B? How much work is required to increase the area of this fluid by 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Now we know that work equals force times displacement. And we're moving the wire in the x direction. Now we know that gamma is force divided by the length. This is the length in the front and the back. So the force is gamma times L. So we can replace F with gamma times L. Now, if we multiply L times D, that gives us the area. So this is L. And as the rod moves by a displacement D, this here is going to be the change in area. That's going to be the increase in area of the fluid. So we can replace L times D with A. So the work done by this force is equal to the surface tension multiplied by the area. And the surface tension is the work required to increase the area of a fluid. So whenever you increase the surface area of a fluid, you're increasing the potential energy of the fluid. And as it snaps back to its original length or its original area, that energy is released. So think of it as a spring. As you expand a spring, as you stretch it, you're storing potential energy. And then once you let go, the spring wants to snap back, releasing that potential energy. Now let's go ahead and finish this problem. Let's calculate the work required to increase the area by that amount. So W is going to be equal to the surface tension, which is 0 0.036 newtons per meter. And then let's multiply by the change in area. So we want to increase the area by 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. So the work required is 1.008 times 10 to the minus 5 joules. Now the units that we get here is going to be newtons times meters, which is basically force times displacement. So one joule is equivalent to a newton times a meter. So that's the answer. Now let's talk about the relationship between temperature and surface tension. What do you think is going to happen to the surface tension of a fluid if we increase the temperature? If you increase the temperature, the surface tension decreases. Let's consider the case with water. At a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius, the surface tension of water is 0 0.076 newtons per meter. If we increase it to 20 degrees Celsius, the surface tension decreases slightly to 0 0.072. If we increase it to 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be 0 
So in the case of water, as we increase the temperature of water, the surface tension of water decreases. Now let's talk about capillary action. Here we're going to have two containers. One is going to contain water and the other is going to contain mercury. And in each container there's going to be a tube. A very thin tube. A very thin tube is also known as a capillary. So here we have water and on the right side, mercury. Now here's a question for you. The water inside the tube, is it going to be above this level or below it? And what about for mercury? Is it going to be above the surrounding liquid or below it? Now capillary action causes fluids to rise above or below the surrounding liquid. And it all depends on the relationship between the adhesive and the cohesive forces in that fluid. Water is going to rise above the surrounding fluid levels. And the reason why that's going to happen is because the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces. Adhesive forces are forces between molecules that are different from each other. And cohesive forces are the forces between the same type of molecule. So the forces that connect the water molecules to the glass, the adhesive forces, it's stronger than the cohesive forces among the water molecules themselves. Now in the case of mercury, on the right side, the cohesive forces are greater than the adhesive forces. And so mercury descends below the surrounding fluid levels. And notice that mercury has a downward concave shape, whereas the meniscus for water is a concave up shape. So mercury is more attracted to itself than it is to the glass. And so that's why the cohesive forces are greater than the adhesive forces. And that's why mercury descends below the surrounding fluid. And so that's the basic idea behind capillary action. So if you place water in a very thin tube, it can easily rise up in that tube.